Peace party people, this is Dan Trez Omi. Some of y'all know me as Brother Omi. Uh, welcome to the first episode of Where My Killer Tape At. Enjoy. Peace. For today's episode of uh, Where My Killer Tape At, um, I'm sipping on clown shoes, chocolate sombrero, Mexican style, chocolate stout. Um, to be honest, man, I, I just got hip to clown shoes this year. Everything I tried that they, that they put out has been delicious. This is by far my favorite. Um, this Mexican style chocolate uh, stout is really rich and thick. Um, you can definitely taste the stout and you can definitely taste the chocolate. So... While I'm doing this show, this is what I'll be sipping on. Word is born. Peace. Yo, been living in Ohio for like 10 years, right? And people look at me funny still when I say soda instead of pop. But yo, I'm from New York, man. Um, and what they say, you can take the kid out of New York, you can't take New York out of the kid. Or you can take the Bronx out, the kid out of the Bronx, but you can't take the Bronx out of the kid. That's me. But I'm not going to say pop, man. Forget y'all, man. It's soda. I'm from New York, where we learn how to describe unhealthy beverages the proper way. Peace. There was a time when, like, we all drank 40s, man. It was crazy. O.E., Valentine Ale, you know, Coke 45. Shout out to Billy D. Williams, a.k.a. Lando Carissian. It was, a, it was an ill time, man. And I remember we used to chip in for 40s, me and my crew. And we'd be outside. They'd be mad cold. And you have your, 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 um, your, your hoodie on and everything, which is your zipper up and everything open. And you just be drinking 40s. It was crazy. But the thing is that 40s was malt liquor, right? And malt liquor is probably like the worst thing to put inside your liver. I didn't mean to rhyme that one, so my bad. Anyway, I remember um, Public Enemy came out with a song back in 1991 called uh, a million ba million bags million bags something like that right um and um a million brown bags and it was pretty much talking about how 40s are bad for you um and it was on the album apocalypse 91 for public enemy which was which is a dope album but he's talking about how 40s are bad for you and there was this coach i can't remember his name he was from la and he did like a whole speech he used to come around the country and speak and talk about how 40 ounces are like crack this is extremely bad for you anyway um Everybody was trying to get into this marketing because, of course, malt liquor is only advertised in the hood, you know, where black and brown people reside, of course. So um, there was this company called St. Ives. I think it was like the McKenzie Corporation. And they developed this uh, malt liquor called St. Ives. And they used hip hop to really market it. So they hired groups like Ice Cube. And they did like, they actually put out like these, back in the days, they sold these cause singles. You know what I mean? We're going to talk about that in a different podcast episode. And they actually used to distribute them for free. And they had this this um, Ice Cube track on one side. And, I, and I, I can't remember who was on the other side. But later on, they put Wu-Tang on it. You know what I mean? And I remember they uh, they sampled Chuck D's voice without his permission. And he did a $5 million lawsuit against him. Anyway, I thought it was significant in hip-hop culture because a lot of us moved away from drinking 40s because that lawsuit brought to light how that stuff is just not good for you. It just really is not good for you. So I just thought that was it was ill how they, how McKenzie Corporation, and I think it's McKenzie River Corporation. I could be wrong. I'm going by memory. All this is by memory. Um, that lawsuit just really opened it up and really opened up that discussion. Now, for the rest of us that was in the conscious community, uh, what you guys know was Hoteps, right? We were already talking to that coach whose name I can't remember, and he was coming around letting us know, hipping us to the game. So it really, for me, myself, it really put me on the path of living a healthier lifestyle back then. Yeah, I'm talking about like 91, 92, way back when. So I think that's crucial that hip hop played a part in that. So here we go. Peace. So, yo, I was, I was listening to Future's um, Mask Off because everybody be talking about it. So I listened to it and it reminds me of that old De La Soul skit. Uh, can you put it on 45 so I can dance to it? Of course, for this segment, we're going to talk about um, what you're reading on. Um, what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to recommend something. 
I'm going to talk about something I read. Um, the recommendation is probably going to be something I read, you know, previously. Um, one thing I just read that I recommend highly is uh, Kathy O'Neill's Weapons of Math, Dest Math Destruction. Excuse my, my accent. Weapons of Math Destruction. M-A-T-H. Yo, what's the math? You're doing the math? That. Really great book. She's straight and to the point. Um, she um, came, came up during, uh, she was a mathematician, came up um, during the 90s, late 90s, where a lot of uh, companies were getting involved in the internet and all that advertising stuff. And she got involved with big data. And I like this book because in the simplest way, she explains how companies use algorithms, you know, Amazon, Google, um, uh, private colleges that are predatory, you know, all those things, real estate agents, they all use algorithms to try to figure out, you know, how to break down customers into categories. So yes, it's racist, sexist, and classes. So she breaks that down, you know, because on one hand, a lot of uh, these data folks will say, oh, we're not racist and we're not sexist, et cetera, et cetera. But then actually they program the algorithms to work a particular way. Um, take note, that she spends a chapter on the prison industrial complex and how policing is done in places like New York and Boston and LA and it's really really ill so I recommend reading that one that's really dope um, currently I am reading um, Taylor Kell's uh, book on her fat her fat geek life pretty she's pretty dope she's a cosplayer uh, who lives in Atlanta um, her name is Taylor Kell really dope she plays Storm um, she plays uh, uh, Breeze from the Red Lanterns. I mean, she does she does Typhoid Mary. So she doesn't just do like the typical stuff that everybody else does. So she's really dope. Um, as a cosplayer, she puts everything together. I thought the book was going to be about focusing on cosplay, but actually it focuses on being a black woman in America and navigating racism, not just in the geek community, but throughout her life. So it's really serious book. It's really heavy. I'm reading it now. I highly recommend it. Um, and shout out to Queen with T, with T and J where they talk about 2017 put money in black women's hands So that's a way for you to do it. So I recommend those two books um, Comic book wise shout out to my man Code of Fett. He's been asking me to read birthright for the longest I found the graphic novel for five but well, excuse me not the graphic novel I'm messing it up for the geeks the trade paperback. I found it for five dollars and I picked it up Coda, Coda Fett, and he lives in uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana. Shout out to everybody in Fort Wayne. Coda always recommends dope stuff to me, and for some reason, I ignore him. And then I stumble upon it, or somebody gives me a free copy or whatever, and I'm like, damn, I should listen to the brother a long time ago. So this one goes out to you. So Birthright is published by Image Comics. It's really, really dope. Um, pretty much the premise is this uh, kid is disappears from his um, family, and they blame the father. They say the father murdered him. Um, and then like he shows up like a couple months later and he's literally Conan like he got, got taken to a different dimension where time just works differently than ours and he ended up being like this hero that saved these people in from that land from this evil guy and then he comes back to earth and he's like this like I said he's Conan with armor you know what I'm saying and his parents are tripping um, and it's really, really good. It's really, really good. I highly recommend it. Um, there's a plot twist in it that's really going to throw everybody off, but that's all I got. Peace. This is the uh, part of the uh, podcast where we talk about how to approach women. Um, the reason why I wanted to uh, do this is because, first of all, a lot of people have asked me to do this. Second of all, I do a lot of traveling. You know, I'll be in a lot of places with a lot of people. And I noticed that guys, on the most part, I'm going to say 97% of the time, I, I know I don't have the studies for it, but I'm just throwing out a number, right? Um, don't know how to talk to women just on any regular basis. Like, they don't know how to hold a conversation. So, I'm going to do this series. There's going to be several segments, probably even the next year or a half, um, and just really give you tips on how to approach women, man. Um, the first thing I do have to say, and this is because the male ego is so fragile, right? I'm going to say that if you're going to do this, go about doing this. Um, the first thing you got to remember, fellas, is you have to learn how to handle rejection. Um, we're not in kindergarten. We're not in the first grade. Um, if we don't get what we want, we shouldn't throw a tantrum, right? Um, you know, babies do that, right? Kids do that. They don't get what they want. They get upset. So we're adults. If a young woman tells you, no, she's not interested, then you, you know, thank you for your time and keep it moving. So the first tidbit is just learn how to handle rejection, man. I mean, you're going to, people are going to say no to you, man. 
J.K. Rowling's, what she had, like 185 rejection letters that she has posted up. 185, man. And she kept it moving. She ain't throw a tantrum. And now she's a best-selling author, right? doesn't mean that um, you're going to marry Beyonce or something like that, right? You're going to marry Serena Williams or whatever. I'm just saying that you're going to be rejected here and there. So first rule of thumb is learn how to handle rejection, man. If you have any questions, of course, man, you can hit me on Twitter um, at Omi's Podcast. And that's O-M as in Mary, I as in Indiana. Um, with S after it, no, no um, apostrophe or nothing, podcast, and you could ask questions on how to approach women. Um, but try to answer some of those questions, but I'm also going to throw in some things here and there. Um, let me know what you think about this segment. But once again, fellas, learn how to handle rejection. This segment is where we usually do shout outs, but... Um, Actually, on a somber moment, man, I really don't want to do this, but it got to be done. Definitely want to um, give roses to those that are not here anymore. Um, first off, I want to give uh, a shout out to the late, great T.C. Islam of the mighty, mighty Universal Zulu Nation. Um, T.C. Islam is prominent in the promotion and recruitment of people in, into Zulu Nation. I know several people that he tried to get into Zulu. I was a member for 18 years myself. He lived in my building in the projects in the Bronx. Um, I see him all the time when I was a young man or a young boy, right? <laughs> and he used to try to get everybody to join Zulu. Back then, I was scared, so I didn't join Zulu. But I remember him for that, always trying to do the knowledge and, you know, really look out for people. So um, the report of his murder was really shocking to me. Um, I haven't talked to him in several decades, but I always remember him fondly. Um, historic, man, just historic brother with a big heart. And it just saddens me that he, he was murdered. Um, the second person... I want to give a shout out to is my man Blaze Uno, Susie Rap out of El Salvador. I got to meet him back in 2015 when I did a residency down there. A good brother with a big heart. Um, he's probably the first cat I saw with locks in El Salvador. Man, he was really dope, really cool, a dope MC. He knew the culture, man. Um, it just really broke my heart when I learned that he passed away suddenly uh, a few weeks back. So, yo, this goes out to you and your family. Man, I love you forever, brother. And finally, of course, we got to give a shout out to the late great prodigy of the seminal hip hop group, uh, Mob Deep. Um, if you don't know who the prodigy is, you probably shouldn't be listening to this podcast. Um, definitely one of the top 10 MCs, very underrated. I mean, at one point he was always doing um, 16s for mad people. Um, he was just a dope MC all the way around. Um, and this is, again, he, he died through complications of sickle cell anemia. And he was very outspoken about that from day one. So true indeed, man. He, he went through a lot. He came out. Definitely a true warrior. So we shout out to that brother as well. Peace. Um, that's it. Uh, first episode of uh, When My Killer Tape Ad. I hope y'all enjoyed it. I thought it was going to be a little bit more uh, rated R, but it actually isn't. I'm going to drop a lot of jewels in there, if I can say so myself. And I don't cuss too much. I thought I was going to cuss a lot. But anyway, um, thank you for supporting it. Please let everybody know. Um, some of you have already approached me about talking about some of those things. You know who you are. You know where I'm at. You can catch me at Twitter at, at Omi's Podcast. So that's O-M-I-S Podcast. Or you can hit me up on at Dan Trezomi. Some of y'all know me as Dan Trezomi. So I appreciate the love. Check it out. Um, it's on SoundCloud for now. Who knows what's going to happen? I hope y'all really appreciate it. Um, also, those little clips that I have was Disco King by Roy Ayers, of course, a B-Boy classic. You know, I'm a B-Boy at heart. So y'all take it easy, man. Be safe out there. And I'll see you on the next app. Peace.